New York creates a lot of trash. Every day, NYC picks up 12,000 tons of refuse and recycling through 2,000 miles of city per day. So how does all this trash go from garbage bag to its final destination? I'm Ed Grayson, Commissioner of New York City's Department of Sanitation. Now trash doesn't just walk onto a garbage truck. And today, we're gonna take you step by step on how that happens. And this is the journey of how one piece of trash goes from here to here. I just went to the guy in the corner, got my coffee cup, I'm done with it. 90% of the time on that, if you don't have some place that's going to take it as paper, if you didn't have a way to find that wax paper, that's just gonna be garbage. We want you to source separate in your house so you're gonna have your regular garbage, you're going to have your paper, and you're gonna have your metal glass and plastics. Next, our coffee cup goes from bag to truck. We have a pretty large fleet. We host over 6,500 total pieces of fleet. About half of that is heavy fleet used for refuse and recycling and debris removal. We're talking about the iconic large white 25 yard collection truck that people see driving around. Our reload and collecting trucks are what's called a pusher packer. There's a piston inside the truck and it's pushing back the whole time. That clam sweeper comes down and it sweeps what's inside the hopper up into the body of the truck. That piston inside the truck is compacting the garbage the entire time. And most of the trucks in New York City are gonna easily hold between 10 and 12 tons of garbage without even batting an eye. And every day those trucks carrying those trash bags are maintaining a unique route throughout the city. Our coverage area is about 6,300 linear miles. So on any given day of the week, we're trying to cover about 2,000 of those miles. And to do that, we're going to dispatch about 7,100 routes per week. So a little over 1,200 a day, we run a six-day collection cycle. The city of New York is five boroughs, but it's 59 community boards inside the five boroughs. And DSNY has a garage for each of the 59 community boards. Our main goal is to get the refuse and recycling route scheduled between midnight, so we'll start on the overnight, and 4 p.m. This gives us 4 p.m. to the next midnight to find out any places that for whatever reason we had a service gap in, whether it was a block street, you know, police activity, you name it, that was blocking our ability to service that area or service those block segments. And then what we use on the 4 p.m. to midnight shift is going out there to totally mop up what we didn't get on the first two watches. What we're definitely trying to do is make sure that we're routing efficiently. That's the main goal, because we want to make sure that we're always getting the latest set of GIS data, seeing how the overlays of our GPS performance is doing, to make sure that we, number one, have every street routed, routed effectively, routed efficiently, so we can complete our routes on time. Next up, transfer station. For the New York City Department of Sanitation, we have five transfer stations. Four are marine transfer stations where we bring it to the station and then the final disposition is gonna go on a barge that takes it to either a landfill operation and or a waste to energy facility. And then lastly, our fifth operation is in the borough of Staten Island and that is a rail transfer station. A lot of people don't realize none of the landfills are here. Some of it goes up north to northern parts of New York. Some of it goes down the I-95 corridor. So we're going to Jersey, we're going to you know, Ohio, we're going to Virginia. And so what does that mean for our Bodega Coffee Cup? Our Bodega Coffee Cup is probably gonna end up in a landfill. In NYC, anywhere from 60% to 70% of trash is still going to landfills. So what exactly is the future of sanitation? How can we prevent more waste from going into landfills. One way is through anaerobic digestion. This is using basically a giant stomach. And you're gonna put your organic material in there to taking this wet waste and this wet organic waste and some food scraps and some food organics and other compostable organic material. And you're gonna add it into basically a giant digester which is full of microbes. And those microbes are gonna break down. Some of the other new emerging technologies that are, are coming down the pipe are wasty volumizers and wasty hydrators. And what they'll do is they'll wring all the water out of it does a couple things. Number one, speeds up the digestion of that to make it more nutrient than compost and or takes up some of the weight and some of the room. So you're getting a twofold bang for that. You're getting less greenhouse gases that could be emitted because it's just not as much material. And more importantly, better chance to turn it into reusable compost depending on what your next step is.
Now, there'll always be a role for the sanitation department. We're going to come, we're going to keep your streets clean, and we're going to come and get you all of those recyclables that are at the curb. We don't want to come pick up your garbage. We want to pick up all the things you did right at the curb every day.